So you'll see looking at our platform here, there's a lot of dead bees. It's not a big deal. It's winter. During winter you'll see this all the way down. Right now we don't have snow and this is the first day in probably 15 days that's above 50 degrees. We're looking at about 57 today. This is my nuke. Bees are flying just fine. They're taking out the dead. That's great. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see the bottom entrance get jammed up. In this case, I closed off the bottom. They do, if we can get under here. They do have a top entrance. You see that bee just crawl out for a second there. Over here, you can see these bees coming in and out. The block in the front is just kind of an idea that I had of trying to minimize the amount of space. As you can tell, there's a yellow jacket right there and a fly. The uh, fly kind of went behind the block, but it minimizes the amount of space that's in front of that door. So it makes it difficult for the bees to come in and out with the dead. However, I will get in there at some point and open it up make sure not open up the hive but just take the block of wood away and take a peek inside and make sure there's not uh, dead stacking up at the entrance but as you can see from the platform they haven't had any problems um, and uh, yeah we're doing good here at Rascal's Apiary Got the chickens over here doing what they're supposed to do. I got a hive way over there. Whoop, right there. And uh, that's the only one with screen bottom board. So what we're trying to do is just keep the bees as warm as possible. Last year we had a stent where the bees were doing great. And then, um, let me show you. Bees chasing this yellow jacket out. Uh, bees were doing great and uh, we had a warm stent all the bees came out after snow and then we had snow again so snow got really warm everything melted all sorts of water and condensation and then uh, it all froze again and uh, that did not kill any of our bees the windstorm that knocked a tree over did but we're, uh, we did hit a hiccup because the queen did start laying a bunch and then these bees were trying to keep the brood warm and then that second snow hit and uh, you know they they a lot of them weren't able to do both you see them beating up a yellow jacket there um, they weren't able to do both keep the brood warm and survive so we lost a lot of bees but we didn't lose any colonies so yeah I just want to keep recording this Oh, and they just flew off with her. It was not a dead yellow jacket. They just get it away from the hive. You know, here's a here's another one. We keep having this issue of yellow jackets, and I've killed numerous amount of uh, yellow jacket underground nests, but uh, they keep popping up this year. Didn't have this problem last year, so I'll probably figure this out and. Just in time for something else to pop up. That's what seems to happen with bees. Once you figure one thing out, the next thing happens. So constantly learning. That's uh, what we try and try and do all the time is just keep learning. There's always going to be somebody that has some sort of advice or some book that tells us to do something that we're like, oh, we would never do that. And then the next year. The situation occurs where, yes, we do have to do that. So when you go to your bee clubs and you're reading stuff online, just keep an open mind. Not everything applies to you. And uh, sometimes it will. But, yep, yeah, that's, 
It's a couple of our hives. Just wanted to show that we are still active. We still have bees. And uh, that my nuke is still making it. And most people s slide these nukes together to keep the warmth and everything. I'm just going to keep a solid bottom board. And uh, I do have a feeder on above there. You may not be able to see it, but it's hard candy. And uh, it's, it's inside of the, the top cover. It's an idea that I took from somebody else. We're going to see if it works this year, but typically people scoot nukes together, or at least with a hive, keep it warm, keep all the warmth close. But since I got a solid bottom board, and I'm... Oop, sorry. I had a bee land on my palm, and I thought I was going to drop the phone. Uh, <laughs> haven't had that before. But we do have the broodminder scales on, so we can monitor the weight, and then uh, I bring the flare camera out every now and then and I, I record. Uh, I'll probably do that in the next couple of days and I'll just set it on a tripod and record the entire day and with the thermal imager which is the FLIR camera I can track where the where the cluster is in the hive. It doesn't stay in one spot like uh, if we were looking at this hive it would be over here towards the front and then by the end of the day it would be over here because it moves with the sun. As the sun moves if the sun's over on this side of the hive they'll be over here and then as it moves over there they'll be over here. Um, that's why a lot of beekeepers will tell you hey make sure you set up their stores so that throughout the day they can eat. Uh, we we did that one year, it worked out okay, but typically I, if I'm just running the one, the one brood box, I'm not changing anything. They're going to be all over that brood box. We, uh, we did the two brood box this year, uh, just because if the rest of these fail, we still got something. It's our, it's our, oops, we experimented and it failed, but, uh. They seem to be doing okay over there too. A lot of bees coming in and out. We did have a scare about a month ago now, and I, I think I posted on Instagram that this this nuke box. I, I walked up and I I went to flick one of the um, the what I thought was a drone, and as I moved it, uh, I could see that red paint on there. They had kicked out one of the queens or their queen, and uh, they're. I thought they were queenless, but then I looked through my notes, which is important to take notes, and they actually had a really old queen in there that was also walking along with a virgin queen, and they kicked out the old queen, and now they just have the virgin one walking around in there. So I think they're still good to go. They're just kicking out the old, starting with the new. If you're interested in the painting, uh, my daughter Avery does all this. Her Instagram is Avery and Acrylics, so check it out. She'll uh, she doesn't post too often, but when she does, it's it's normally something pretty spectacular. I mean, this is her her Lord of the Rings hive, and she did this all in one day on a, a rainy day where we were kind of trapped because of a hurricane, and she just said, "Hey, I'm gonna paint one of the boxes," and I typically she paints one side. Uh, this time she just, all day, just sitting there painting and she just, I think it's okay. For for her age and the amount that she paints, this is spectacular. And she, uh, on the top there she has horses on each side and she, she did that in about 15 minutes. She did the whole box with different horses. And then on the bottom she has, uh, some uh, gods and goddesses. It looks like it's uh, all Norse gods. And she has dragons here. A bunch of other stuff that looks pretty cool. But uh, she just paints these on her off time. So I'm, uh, I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks and pump out a bunch of hives uh, as far as in the workshop. And... I'll have her spend some of the, the snow days that she gets and she can paint them because uh, if, if it's up to me I just take the the paint sprayer out and I just spray all of them the same color and it's it's just fine with me but she likes having color out here and so is the wife so it works out okay anyway that's our update 
we're still out here. We're still doing stuff. My new job takes me traveling a lot, so I don't get time to come out and do recordings. If I made you sick by uh, moving the camera a lot, I'm sorry. It's just what I do.